welcome to BSF Recovery Team in our next step in our Dana 60 build. If you notice, we took the uh, steering knuckles all apart, uh, cleaned everything up. We did that for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, we wanted to uh, make sure that everything was able to take grease, uh, that nothing was rusted up, nothing was uh, in need of replacement. And secondly, because we have to uh, install our high steer uh, crossover steering arm, uh, and then consequently, we'll take we took the uh, steering arm for the push pull drag link uh, off, and we'll be using the cap from the passenger side uh, now on the driver's side uh, to replace that steering arm. We did have a little trouble getting that apart. Uh, let's check that out. Well, we wanted to strip the knuckles off of this housing, uh, first of all, before we wash it. And then uh, secondly, because we have to change over the steering arms a little bit, uh, we're having a little trouble getting this steering arm off. Uh, the nuts were uh, really corroded, and the socket started to spin on there. We were only able to get one out. Uh, so what I did is I chased down the threads above the nut a little bit, uh, threaded on uh, another nut, and welded it in place. We'll see if that's going to be enough to pull the whole stud out. Excellent. That one's not coming. Looks like we got a little bit of weld overlapping here. Can't quite get the socket on. See if we can touch that up a little bit. <laughs> the nut is tapered like a lug nut to keep it tight. So if we put a little bit of heat here right on the corner of the casting uh, and expand that uh, tapered hole a little bit, that should make the, uh, the lug nut or the nut uh, come loose. Of course we're trying to pull out the whole stud too, but the stud shouldn't be corroded into the threads on the bottom part of the casting too much. Oh, that one came. She's hot. I don't want to touch it. Uh, let's see if this one will come. There we go. You want to take these four bolts off? Sure. So why? Oh. Keep going. So why do you have to take them off? Well, because we want to make sure the cones are tight underneath. The GM Kingpin 60s have a tendency to loosen up the cones. So we want to make sure the cones are tight underneath, and then we want to fill them full of grease. 
Even so, though there's grease certs, we want to make sure that the grease certs are clean so we can grease them on a regular basis. That one has a protective, that one did not. Yeah, it did. It fell on the floor when I took the cap off. Oh. bottom has to slide out and then the top tips off of the cone. Just like that. Awesome. Well, we did finally get it apart. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to get it apart is because we wanted to make sure that these cones were tight in the, uh, in the yoke here. Uh, commonly, uh, the driver's side one with the push-pull drag link uh, does have a tendency to loosen up. We wanted to make sure that that was tight on this one, um, and it is. Uh, the other thing is, is we wanted to make sure that the uh, tapered roller bearing uh, down here was uh, able to take grease, that it wasn't all rusted up or, or crudded up with dry grease. So both the cone is good and the tapered roller bearings are good on both sides. Uh, so now we can put the knuckle back together. Okay, very first thing is, is to put our little seal back on the top, uh, the bottom of the cone here, and then we'll set our steering knuckle on. And we install our pin into the bottom, the tapered roller bearing. There we go. And we can go ahead and tighten those up. There might be a torque spec for those, but it's not real crucial. Tight is tight. Okay, the next step would be to put our plastic uh, cone in, or nylon, actually, cone. Uh, but as you can see, this one got melted a little bit when we had our trouble taking our uh, push-pull drag link steering arm off. Uh, so we got another one. We got a new one right here. You can still get all the parts for these individually. Uh, Spicer makes them. Now, there's a little notch right here and a little tab on the nylon. You got to make sure that you line those up. And that goes down on there like that. Uh, don't worry about the grease right now. If you want to, you can grease them a little bit when you assemble them. Um, but they should, uh, but there is a greaser at the top here, uh, the cap, and that's how you fill it up with grease. There's also one on the bottom of the cap down there. So then the spring goes on, and then the cap. Make sure you put the greaser on the inside, or towards the inside, so you can get at it when the wheel's on. Um, 
but we got to put a little bit of uh, gasket maker material on here. Uh, we aren't going to use thick silicone. Um, they do make a gasket for this. I didn't get any. Uh, what I'm going to use instead is I'm going to use some uh, red anaerobic uh, gasket maker. This stuff only dries under pressure and uh, it makes for a very thin sealing material. Oops. You want to make sure that the washer is uh, down against the nylon. Now, the hard part here is the bolts are just barely long enough to start. Or aren't quite long enough to start. So you got to apply a little pressure to get them started. Once you get them started, just like anything else, you want to draw them up even. There we go. That one's put together. Don't want to forget to grease that, but we'll go put the other side together first. Then we'll grease them both. Now, on this side, crossover and high steer arm here uh, gets put on. And that isn't held on by bolts. That has studs and uh, nuts. Uh, the nuts specifically have a taper to them, kind of like lug nuts. In fact, they are just like lug nuts. And that's to help keep it tight from under the pressure of the steering. Um, there are some steering arms out there that uh, use bolts and don't have the... Uh, tapered holes and uh, boy I'll tell you what I've seen a lot of those come loose and the bolts break and uh, then they're on the back of the wrecker getting hauled out of the woods so do yourself a favor make sure if you uh, change over to the crossover steering uh, or the high steer make sure that you use a steering arm that has the tapered holes and the tapered nuts to help keep it tight put the studs in uh, we do just the opposite of the way we took them out. Uh, a couple of jam nuts on top, and we'll thread them down in there. Now we'll draw them up. Now I'm sure there is a torque spec on those and it should be the same as the torque spec on the factory steering arm that would have went on the other side. So. We'll go look that up and see what that is. Okay, it looks like they want these uh, somewhere between 80 and 100 foot pounds. And we're there. When they're dry like these are, they're going to take a lot of grease before they fill up. The trick to greasing these is, is grease them without the weight on. Even when the axle is in the truck, it's best to jack it up and get the weight off of the tires when you're greasing them. And then also work it back and forth like this and grease it some more. That way the grease works all the way around that cone. 
and you know you're getting there when you start seeing grease come out down here. Same thing with the bottom one. You grease it, work it back and forth, do it with the weight off of it. Especially this one, because it is the load carrier. The upper one is considered just a follower. So, we installed our tie rod and we put our axle shafts in. The next step is our spindle cones and our brake anchors. So we're not going to get too detailed on putting the uh, spindles back on and the hubs all back together because I believe I've covered that in at least one or two of my other videos. Um, but there is a couple of rubber seals on the inside here on the axle shaft and a thrust washer. You want to make sure that you clean and grease those real good. You also want to make sure that you clean and inspect the uh, needle bearing that's on the back of the spindle cone here and uh, clean and repack it with grease. We've uh, put our shim back on uh, where it's supposed to be, our camber shim, and then uh, our spindle cone can go on. And our brake anchor. And what's left of our brake shield and uh, mud or dirt or rock guard, whatever you want to call it. No. What are the spindle nuts? They go on after the house. Spindle nuts. Oh, hello, pretty. <laughs> now, do I have to do a star pattern on this? Or? Yes. Three times, or twice, twice or three times. Can we hit them again? I don't know. And we pack our wheel bearings. Got this new bearing packer here. Maybe that'll uh, entice me to uh, maintain these wheel bearings a little bit better more often. Even with the new packers, still a messy job. Now we can put our hub and rotor on. Now, what apparently has become Mara's new favorite word is the spindle nuts. Remember the one uh, with the pin goes in first and the pin goes to the outside so one of the holes in that washer can fit over the pin and lock it into place. Tightening the spindle nut, same procedure as uh, your uh, trailer or a two-wheel drive, the front, uh, front of a two-wheel drive truck, car, old school stuff. You rotate, snug it up, Rotate it a little bit, snug it up a little more, and then see if the washer, where the tab goes into the slot and the spindle, uh, see if one of the holes goes over the pin. If it doesn't, you can turn it over and try it again because they are offset. And if, it, if it still doesn't, then you need to adjust the nut one way or the other, just a little bit. The washer sits flat and doesn't rock back and forth, it's over the pin. Then you put the outer spindle nut on, and jam it down against the washer to lock everything tight. Just like that. Okay, finally we get to install the lockout hub. Remember our outer snap ring? 
Now, quite often you have to push the axle shaft out a little bit to get the other snap ring in. You can make sure that's in the groove by rotating it around until the ends come together. Or almost together. Now, it seems to me that every one of these little screws that I've ever had to drill out because they were stripped or stuck or you couldn't get them out, as soon as you drilled the head off, they threaded right out. So that tells me that what usually makes them stick is uh, the head of the Allen in that uh, recessed hole. So I like to smear just a little bit of grease on each one around the head to help prevent that from happening. And then, of course, we'll check and see if it locks. And it does. Unlocks. And locks. Well, our axle's all back together again. Uh, we just got to put it in the truck. We're kind of waiting on a couple of uh, spring eye bushings. Um, parts are a little bit hard to get yet still. Uh, I did have to order them. They will be here uh, hopefully this week. Um, so we're going to take a break right now. And uh, actually uh, we have a recovery for Toby to do. It's not the recovery I was speaking of in the other video. That's a mission for the wrecker and that's yet to come. Just like they are. Yeah, that's fine. Chris? Yeah. Um, turn on your backup camera and just see when you stretch your rope out. When you stretch your rope out and then back up about five feet. I can't get off this feet. Chris, you're not in four-wheel drive. Ready? Yep. Ready?
Well, you always got to hear. So that wasn't too hard a recovery. Well, thanks for watching, BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, be safe out there, and maybe we'll see you in the woods.